Hey, what's up, everybody? If you're preparing for the civil FE or PE exam, I bet you already asked yourself this question when solving any problem about bearing capacity. Should I use the ultimate bearing capacity or the net bearing capacity equation to find the allowable bearing capacity? That is hands down the most common bearing capacity question a lot of you have when you're studying for your exam because different study manuals use different equations for those. And so they have different takes on it as well. And if that's the case, what should you do then, right? What's the right way to go so that you, when you get this equation on the exam, you're gonna do it the right way? That's a big question. If you wanna know the answer to that question, then you're gonna wanna watch this video to the very end because we're gonna dive into the details and the basics of bearing capacity, everything that you're gonna need to know for your exam and put an end to the ultimate versus net bearing capacity dilemma once and for all so you know what to do on your exam day. I'm Isaac Okason. I'm with Civil Engineering Academy, a platform built from the ground up by civil engineers to help other fellow civil engineers just like you, help you pass your civil PE exam or any professional exam that's gonna help you on that journey to become a professional engineer. So stick with me because this one's gonna be coming up right after this. Okay, so the first thing is this. What exactly is the bearing capacity of a soil? As a civil engineer, you know the job of the foundation is to receive all the loads from the structure and transfer that thing down to the ground. For this to happen safely, the soil upon which the foundation lies has to be able to take on such a load without failing, or as civil engineers sometimes call it, settling beyond what is allowed for it. Take a look at the Tower of Pisa, for example. It started to tilt uh, even before construction was completed. And why was that? After it reached a certain height, the load applied by the tower self-weight to the soil via the foundation was bigger than the soil could actually handle, which caused the soil to move downward on one side and the tower began to tilt. And uh, this is what bearing capacity is all about. It's the capacity of the soil to support the pressure created by by the total load coming from the foundation. It's a measure of the soil's load carrying ability, how much it can take on before the thing fails. This is an important piece of information that allows civil engineers to design appropriate foundations in the real world to guarantee the structure stability of any structure. And it's also one of the NCEES's favorite soil mechanics topics for the exam questions that you're gonna find on your civil FE or PE exam. So if you plan on taking any of those exams, those two beastly exams soon, then you need to truly understand what bearing capacity is and know how to apply it to solve questions. But here's a quick warning for you. While various factors influence the bearing capacity of the soil, including soil type, the cohesion of the soil, the groundwater table, and the type of foundation we're dealing with, if it's deep or if it's shallow, most of the theories and what the NCES usually writes on the exam on this topic has to do with shallow foundations. So we're going to focus on those today. So now let's move on to the first type of bearing capacity thing we want to talk about. What then that question is, what is the ultimate bearing capacity? So ultimate bearing capacity is denoted by Q subscript U. So Q U. And it's pressure at the base of the foundation, which the failure of the soil takes place. So that is what Q U is. That is, it's the load per unit area of your foundation that if reached the causes the soil to actually fell. It's simply the ultimate maximum load it can take on. And one load value we civil engineers should definitely steer clear of. This failure in the soil is called shear failure. And it can happen in three different ways uh, when ultimate buried capacity is reached depending on the soil conditions that you're dealing with. However, the most common type of shear failure used both on famous buried capacity theories and on the NCEES exam is uh, the general shear failure is what you're going to deal with. In this type of shear failure, when the load applied to the soil by the foundation increases, then the settlement will increase as well. When the load per unit area e 
equals the ultimate bearing capacity value, or QU, the soil felt, causing a bulging around the soil footing, and you never want that, right? That happens on one only on one side, which leads to tilting of the structure. Okay, so now how do you calculate ultimate bearing capacity? As a civil engineer, you probably got to know, well, you've gotten to know a guy by the name of Terzaghi, right? Way back in your college days, or even if you're in college, and he was actually the first person to try to come up with a theory to evaluate the ultimate buried capacity of the soil, and he did that. His famous equation looks like this equation. So C in this is the cohesion of the soil. Gamma is the unit weight of the soil. Q is the surcharge applied by the weight of the soil plus the footing and any load present on ground level, if there is any. B is the width of the footing. NC, NQ, and N gamma are non-dimensional bearing capacity factors found in a table based on the soil friction angle. Now, Terzaghi's equation only applies to shallow type foundations or the what they call a strip or continuous footing, and it's subject only to vertical loads. And with the groundwater table for the given soil located well below the foundation. So despite these simplified assumptions that he made, it still works pretty well in real life situations. And it's what the NCEES will want you to know on the exam questions that match these type of assumptions. On the other hand, and if the question doesn't match these assumptions, for example, if it's not a strip footing, then the other factors need to be added to Rizagi's equation in their respective terms in addition to what's already there to account for these things. So when it comes to the civil FE and the PE exam, the two most common factors are sheet correction factors and groundwater table correction factors. Those are the ones that come up. These factors can be calculated based on the friction angle C or by the uh, formulas and included in the tables that can be found in both the FE and the PE reference handbook. I'm not going to go deep into that, but just to give you an idea, here's a quick example. If you get a question involving a square footing and the location of the groundwater table does impact the foundation, then here's what the ultimate bearing capacity would then look like. Now, let's get to where things get a little bit confusing. The question now is, what is net bearing capacity? Well, you get net bearing capacity by simply uh, subtracting out the pressure applied by the weight of the soil located above the base of the footing from the ultimate bearing capacity value you found with Terzaghi's equation. Net bearing capacity is denoted by Q in that subscript net, Q net. And its equation looks like this. So in this, you're simply removing the load already applied to the soil by upper layers of soil, which leaves you with the maximum load value your structure alone can apply to the soil that causes it to shear. Now, if it's that simple, why is it where things can get start getting messy and confusing? That is uh, a great question. Now, the answer to that is because and study resources such as the Civil Engineering Reference Manual and Geotechnical Textbooks, they mention mention net bearing capacity while the FE and the PE reference handbooks do not. But if you think about it, the maximum pressure that the total load of the structure can create on the soil foundation or via the foundation is less than the ultimate capacity value, simply because the soil is already taking on pressure from upper layers of soil. That's what net bearing capacity is all about. And that's why the CIRM, which is what we call that, and the geotechnical books mention it. It's the real pressure that the soil can take on from the loads coming from the structure alone that will be transferred via the foundation, which is what design engineers care about, right? Okay, you know what ultimate and you know what net bearing capacity is. Now, regardless of which one you use, they're both maximum load values that can cause the soil to fell. As I mentioned before, you do not operate on the ultimate value at all. You need to add a factor of safety, which is usually two to usually two to three to this failure load and use this lower, safer value instead. This low lower value is the allowable bearing capacity, and it tells you 
you how much pressure your foundation is allowed to apply to the soil so it doesn't go anywhere near failing. We love safety factors and we definitely have to apply them here. Now, however, that's when things get even crazier for those preparing for your exams. And the question is, why is that? Allowable bearing capacity can take on two forms. You have a ultimate allowable bearing capacity, which is Q allowable with a subscript U. When you add the factor of safety to the ultimate bearing capacity value, QU, you also have net allowable bearing capacity, which is Q allowable subscript net. When you add the factor of safety to the net bearing capacity or Q net value. Now, which one should you solve, should you use to solve problems that you get? And even more important, which one should you use to get the question right on your big exam day? So let's put an end to this dilemma once and for all. First of all, if you're confused about this already, don't feel bad. You're definitely not alone. I'm probably confused myself, but I get this question a lot. So we're going to knock this out. This is hands down the most asked bearing capacity question that students of both RFE and RPE review courses have when they get to the soil mechanics section. And even I myself struggle with this concept, trying to get over this hump way back in the day when I took the exam. This is very normal for everybody preparing for these exams because even reputable textbooks and reference manuals get this thing mixed up. The CERM itself, if you go check that out, tells you to find QNET and then use it to find the allowable value. But then in the solution to the problems, it simply uses the ultimate bearing capacity to find the allowable value. Like, what is that about? What I get it. I've been there myself. I've learned one little trick that solves these problems with our students that I'm going to share with you. And I share this um, with everyone inside of our courses. But now I'm going to share that tip with you today. So here we go. Live by this rule whenever you get a bearing capacity question. You'll only use the net bearing capacity to find the allowable bearing capacity if and only if the problem statement explicitly directs you to do so by including pieces of information such as consider the weight of the soil above the footing or consider correction for overburden. If you see anything like that in the problem statement, then you're going to go with net bearing capacity as this is the value that accounts for this overburden pressure. If nothing like this is given, you're going to use the ultimate bearing capacity, get the question right, and then simply move on to the next. In actual practice though, every engineer works a little bit differently and every project is different. That's why there are these two forms for the same quantity. But when it comes to passing Passing the civil FE or the PE exam, follow this rule and you're going to be all set. So hopefully that solved that for you. This is going to be, that comes up all the time. Anyway, that's going to be it for this one today, everybody. There's a lot more bearing capacity for shallow foundations that we uh, have covered. A lot of information about that out there. And uh, But this was intended to be a quick overview of the basics and to put an end to the dilemma of the most common problem and the most common question that we face uh, as people prepare for their exams right now. All right, so now you know the general concept of bearing capacity, the difference between ultimate and net bearing capacity, and the little known trick to decide which of those two you need to or use to find the allowable bearing capacity. Get the question right and crush your civil FE or PE exam. And here at Civil Engineering Academy, we're all about helping you on this journey. Uh, we're civil engineers ourselves who've been helping fellow civil engineers just like you get over the hump of passing their exams more than a decade now. It's been quite some time. It's awesome. I know how hard things are to get to pass this thing. So I've got something to help you on this journey if you are preparing for it to help you kickstart your studies. So if you're preparing for the civil FE exam, we've scoured the internet ourselves for the best FE resources out there so you don't have to. We've put them all together in our five best FE resources guide, which is all the best resources that can be really set up for your success if you're going to use them in your exam prep. You're going to want to check that out. So head over to the link in the description below and you're going to find the link there and the page where you can get this awesome guide for free. Also, if you want to check out our FE review course that does all the heavy lifting for you and provides you with all the material that you're going to need, you can go straight to our website, civilfereviewcourse.com by clicking the link in the description below as well. Uh, we're going to get that in there too. Now, if you're planning on taking the civil uh, PE exam instead, we've created a sweet guide for you there as well. The Ultimate Civil PE Startup Guide comes with proven tips and resources to get your start on the right foot when it comes to your PE exam prep from the prerequisites that you're going to need to meet to exam prep secrets to the time-tested PE resources that are out there that you're going to need to have to pass your exam. All you need to get is set up with a winning PE 
CE exam prep is in this guide. You can get this thing for free as well by heading to civilengineeringacademy.com slash PE guide, or you can check out the description again in the link below. We're going to link that for you as well. And if you want to check out our PE review course that teaches you what you really need to be done to ace this exam, head over to civilpereviewcourse.com by clicking in the link in the description below, and you're going to be on your way to getting your own PE license way faster than you think you can. All right, guys and gals, before I wrap this up, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell uh, because we're going to be producing a lot more of these videos. And uh, if you hit the bell, you'll be able to be notified when these things come out immediately than when we send them out the door. So um, this includes more videos just like this one with advice and tips to help you crush your exams, taking uh, also your career to the very next level. We also publish free video practice problems every single week based on the exam specifications so you can get as much practice under your belt as possible which is really the key to passing these exams and believe me we've done a video about that that you can check out as well we will link that for you now on top of all that we have lots of interviews with successful practicing civil engineers who have been in your shoes and share their best practices their tips their tools their resources their study habits and all the tricks of the trade and you can steal their tips to success and their secrets uh, there as well so definitely check that out so hit that subscribe button below and if you haven't if you haven't done that already make sure you're hitting the notification bell uh, if you need anything else or you want to find out other ways that we can help you be sure to check out our main site at civilengineeringacademy.com you're going to find everything you need there to crush your exams all right that's going to be it hope you enjoyed this one we'll see you in the next one have a great day.